Based on his preseason performance, Kenny Pickett's gonna have the best sophomore season we've ever seen. Top 10 quarterback this season despite Matt Canada. Well, that didn't work out. Steelers are still fine. Hi, I'm football sex addict Brandon Perna, and I'm always right, almost. And when I'm not exactly correct, roughly 0.1% of the time, I'm willing to admit it, all right? We're about halfway through the NFL season, and today I'm going to man up and break down all of the things I, we got wrong about the 2023 season in today's video. And some of those things are so wrong, you probably forgot we thought the opposite. Let's do it. Starting with CJ Stroud, oh my God. I was not sold on CJ Stroud becoming an instant leader for a pretty bare bones Texans roster. Uh, but it turns out he's exactly that, and the Texans have a lot of playmakers. It just took a competent QB to unlock the potential of guys like Nico Collins, Tank Dell, and Noah Brown. I thought Stroud would have a better sophomore season than a rookie year, uh, that his ceiling was higher than Young's, but that Bryce Young was the most pro-ready QB in this draft. Dumb, I know. I thought Stroud was more physically gifted than Bryce Young, and that the Texans roster was even more bare than the Panthers, thus equating to more success later. I still think CJ Stroud will have a better sophomore season, which means God help everybody in the AFC South. Now I made a video covering Stroud a little bit more uh, in depth, so make sure you check that but he's on an incredible pace right now, throwing 15 TDs while somehow keeping the ball out of harm's way. Just one pick for a rookie QB through eight games in Houston, Texas is unheard of. Now, one thing I didn't point out in the CJ Stroud video is that he's doing all of this with the 30th ranked rushing attack. The Texans averaged 3.3 yards per carry, giving their rookie passer very little help. And we thought Damian Pierce was gonna have a 1,000, 1,200 yard season. We were wrong about that as well. But CJ's picked up the slack with over eight yards per attempt through the air and just throws the ball like a 10 year pro. Lions rookies, we were wrong about them. The Lions first three picks uh, left a lot of people scratching <laughs> clawing their heads, a first round running back with DeAndre Swift on the roster, an inside linebacker at 18th overall, and a tight end didn't feel like they were going to take this team to the next level. Wrong. Despite free agent signing David Montgomery getting the lion's share of the carries, especially at the goal line, Jameer Gibbs is actually the team's leading and most efficient runner by a wide margin to go with 28 grabs out of the backfield. But to eat more crow, I thought Detroit was insane to let Jamal Williams go. Uh, Montgomery, before he got hurt this season, was the Lions' workhorse and far outperformed Williams on the season. Jack Campbell uh, has struggled a bit in coverage, but he owns the best PFF run-stopping grade on the team and is a big reason the Lions have allowed the second fewest rushing yards in the league. A massive improvement from being fourth worst in 2022. And how about Sam Laporta. In a year that's been tough on tight ends across the league, the 34th overall pick has been the model of consistency. Here are the four tight ends with more yards than Laporta so far. Travis Kelsey, TJ Hawkinson, Mark Andrews, and George Kittle. As I and many have mentioned, tight end is one of the toughest transitions per position groups from college to the pros and Laporta's making it look easy. That's pretty good company to be in, by the way. So these three rookies are a huge reason the Lions are on top of the NFC North and that will pay dividends for a while. Also back to Jameer Gibbs. He's about one more dominant game away from making the Falcons selection of Bijan Robinson look more questionable. Not a knock on Bijan, but we were wrong in thinking Bijan had a real chance to win Offensive Rookie of the Year. It's not his fault. He has all the talent in the world, but just one game with more than 14 carries and Tyler Algier is the preferred back in goal line situations. Thinking Arthur Smith, who was the Titans OC when Derrick Henry had 1,500 and 2,000 yard seasons with 16 and 17 rushing TDs, would empower Bijan to do the same with that third best rushing team from 2022 was very, very wrong thinking. Yeah, today's episode is sponsored by manscaped.com slash goodsports. Last month, Manscaped launched the Lawnmower 5.0 
Oh yeah, now you can get the Performance Package 5.0 Ultra for your package. You get the new lawnmower 5.0, the Weed Whacker 2.0 for your ear and nose hair trimming needs, plus the Crop Smoother, Crop Preserver, and Anti-Chafing Ball Cream, and the Ball Mat. But the star of the package is the Lawnmower 5.0. Ultra. It now has two heads with dual skin safe technology accompanied by an upgraded trimmer blade and interchangeable foil blade for enhanced performance. The foil blades allow you to get utterly bare down there. You can easily swap out the trimmer blade for the foil blade to get the exact trim session you desire with ease. It's really like having two trimmers in one. It has a rechargeable lithium ion battery, a bigger LED light, which trust me is handy in that wrinkly ball area, travel lock, and yes, it's waterproof. So again, use my link below, manscaped.com slash good sports. To join the 9 million men worldwide, 18 testicles if you count it that way, that trust Manscaped. 20% off and free international shipping, but only with my link below. Another wronger, Aaron Rodgers leading the Jets to the playoffs. What can you say about this one except that we all knew we were wrong about this roughly 15 seconds into the season. This was probably the one I'm saddest to be wrong about. Not only because Aaron Rodgers tore his Achilles or that long-suffering Jets fans had their hopes dashed in an instant, uh, but mostly because I've had to endure so many Zach Wilson games this year. That's the real pain. Now the Jets are currently not out of the race, but it's tough to watch the former second overall pick squander the eighth best scoring defense in the NFL. The defense has gotten 13 takeaways in eight games and the offense has given it up 13 times. I sincerely hope that Aaron Rodgers can come back in time to at least give it a, a go near the end of the season before the Jets are out of it because this defense does deserve some points on the board. Also, are we done pretending that Nathaniel Hackett was a victim of circumstances in Denver? The Jets offense has eight fucking touchdowns in eight games, and he's got Garrett Wilson and Brees Hall. Another major wrong, Mac Jones would be better with a real offensive coordinator. With Matt Patricia and Joe Judge no longer breathing down his neck, I figured that Mac Jones would revert back to his rookie form when he threw 22 touchdowns and 13 picks, getting a Pro Bowl nod and leading the Pats to the playoffs for the only time in the post-Brady era. And oh brother, was I wrong. Mac Jones went from Mac Jones to McCorkle to just straight up mackerel. I also believed that Ramondre Stevenson would be a bell cow for the Patriots in this process. <laughs> and in true Bella Checkian fashion, he hasn't had more than 10 carries since October 1st in a game. Jones has actually regressed from where he was last year, and that wasn't good. After going from Patricia to a well-respected offensive coordinator in Bill O'Brien, Jones' yards per attempt are down from 6.8 to 6.1, his yards per game are down, and he leads the NFL with nine interceptions, three of those being of the pick six variety, a big reason the Pats are in a position to tank. So Belichick doubled, nay triple dipped, back into his own coaching tree, and that was stupid. Think about it, Josh McDaniels leaves for Las Vegas, and instead of searching for a fresh and upcoming offensive coordinator, Bill lets two former Patriot coaches in Patricia and Judge run the offense. One year later, needing a real OC, Bill opts for former Pats coach Bill O'Brien instead of, you know, a young and hot up and coming OC. Another wrong thing, the Vikings would regress. Now this was true, at least for the first three weeks of the season, even though Kirk Cousins was playing lights out. After the Vikings won 12 games despite getting outscored last year, the classic nerd retort was that it would be unsustainable to do it again, and they looked like they had a point when the Vikings started 1-4 on the season. Now they've won four games in a row, three of those wins coming by a margin of one score, and they've suddenly leapfrogged to the to second in the NFC North with a pretty favorable schedule the rest of the way. Of course, there's one huge problem, and that would be their quarterback, Big Kirko Cousins, who was putting up MVP caliber numbers, tore his Achilles a couple weeks ago. But I commend the Vikings for not laying down and instead calling Arizona to make a trade for Joshua Dobbs, who won a game in relief of Jaron Hall in exhilarating fashion against the Falcons. It was the perfect trade. Low risk, 
with a clear upgrade. Dobbs has been a revelation this year despite being traded twice. Once he gets the playbook, which should be easier than, you know, mastering rocket science, and Justin Jefferson is back in the lineup, the Vikings have a real shot to return to the playoffs sans cousins. Now, mainly uh, because nobody in the NFC North is truly good except for the Lions. You also have to give credit to Jordan Addison because he's kept that offense humming in the absence of Jefferson, which leads me to another thing we were wrong about, Quentin Johnston. Rookie receiver selected by the Chargers out of TCU would tear it up with Justin Herbert slinging him the ball. Four receivers went in a row uh, at the end of the first round. Addison was last. He's been the best of the four receivers, followed by Zay Flowers and then Jackson Smith and Jigba, with Johnston notching just 14 receptions on the season for 128 yards and no TDs. And Addison and Johnston were and are in very similar situations. Uh, Jefferson goes down in Minnesota, Addison steps up. Johnston had a massive opportunity to shine in LA when Mike Williams tore his ACL. It might click at some point, but I thought that was going to be an impact pick right away for the Chargers. I was wrong about the Bears, and I had reasonable expectations. 500 record. I think about everyone on earth thought Justin Fields was on an upward trajectory after a season where he put up a thousand yards on the ground, but the Bears were nothing short of a train wreck early in the season. DJ Moore didn't really make an impact right away and Chase Claypool made a huge impact. Just not in a good way. But after putting up a trifecta of stinkers to start the season, Justin Fields actually put together two very strong performances in a row against the Broncos and Commanders, winning one of those games. However, two of the Bears' three wins have come via the right arm of Tyson Bagent. I don't think Bagent is coming for Fields' starting job, but this year hasn't been a significant step forward for Chicago, and they could very well be in the Jim Harbaugh market after Michigan's 349th scandal this year. Another thing we were wrong about, Packers fans being ready for life without Aaron Rodgers. Am I taking crazy pills? What, am, like, leg, am I, what is going on? Oh, you noobs. Oh, I thought you were ready for the transition. I can see why the season hit them like a ton of bricks though. I really do empathize. After three decades of quarterback Nirvana, literally, they've had a Hall of Fame QB since Nirvana was on top of the charts. It's hard to come to grips with the fact that those types of players do not grow on trees. And to be completely honest, I'm not sure they come from Utah State either. The Packers got off to a hot start at two and one, but have since lost four of five with that lone win coming against a Brett Rippin led Rams team. Love has certainly struggled during that stretch, but the Packers were counting on a little more from Christian Watson and Romeo Dubs in year two. Those guys have combined for just over 500 yards and 13 combined starts. Instead, rookie Jaden Reed has actually emerged as the Packers leading receiver with 333 yards. And with the holidays coming up, don't forget coffee is a great stocking stuffer. Head over to benchwarmerbrew.com. We got the fuck the refs blend. We got the losers blend. We dropped some tumblers. And also we have massive sales on some of our mugs. We're trying to clean those out of the stock room. So uh, go check it. There's some, there's, they're really cheap right now. They're really cheap right now. Wrong, the New York Giants, everything. We and they were wrong about fucking everything. I've never seen a team ascend so fast and then fall even faster. They're the FTX of NFL teams. Brian Dable was the AP coach of the year in 2022. And this year, the team has been so bad that this cool throne has melted under the fires of uncertainty. The Giants were middle of the pack offensively, 15th in scoring, and now they're dead last. That might be because of their $40 million man, uh, Dan Jones, who threw just two touchdowns in six games before tearing his ACL. They're now down to Tommy DeVito. Yabagoo! Hey, it's a me, a Tommy DeVito. A team that won a playoff game a year ago is starting an undrafted rookie out of Syracuse, and their only solace will be a shot at either Drake May or Caleb Williams to replace the guy they just paid. Which, for all of us who knew Jones wasn't the guy, like at all, is actually a great spot to be in. Another thing we were wrong about, Puka Nakua. Hard to be wrong about a guy uh, when you don't know who the hell he is. And if you did hear his name, you thought he was 
a necklace. What a real puka shell is. It's a shell. They call him Puka. But I admit, I didn't know this guy. I didn't know him even after he caught 10 passes in week one while Cooper Cup was out. And then he went on to beat the Colts with a game winner in OT a few weeks later. I didn't know him then. His production has dropped since Cup re-entered the lineup and since Stafford hurt his thumb. But going from completely anonymous to the fourth leading receiver in the league over the span of two months is an incredible feat. And I hope he finishes the season strong. Another thing we were wrong about, assuming the Panthers knew what they were doing after trading up to the first pick in the draft, the Panthers made an earth shattering move to get a shot at a franchise changing QB in the draft, moving heaven, earth, and DJ Moore in the process. And there he was, right in their lap. And uh, they, they selected Bryce Young. All right, the Greek tragedy in all of this is that Frank Reich did want CJ Stroud, and he was overruled by all of his higher ups and had to settle for Young, who was immediately hamstrung by the loss of DJ Moore and has already uh, seen a very tough start to his career. Stroud is averaging over eight yards per attempt while Young is stuck at 5.5. Let's keep in mind, Anthony Richardson was looking pretty good before he got injured as well. So with three options on the table, they chose the guy who could help them the least right away. When Carolina moved up to number one, I called them dumb because they said they didn't move up for a specific guy. You cannot make that move if you don't have a guy you're willing to to give up the farm for. To move up and then evaluate is a losing plan, and they are losing their arses right now. You have to draft the guy who can flash without DJ Moore. That they did not do. Boom, those are the things we got wrong. Thanks for watching here on That's Good Sports. If you don't hate me by now, please subscribe to this YouTube channel. We're doing a lot of fit, 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 football videos all the time.